Hi, I'm Brendan Peterson, one of Scribe's technical evangelists, and I'm going to cover today the Scribe Online request reply service. Scribe Online added a new event option when you pick a solution to the integration services product. When you select that event type of solution, um, you're going to get a couple different options. Now, what these event maps are are really reducing us from doing a polling process looking for change data, you know, using our high watermark that we've had in the past. This is going to allow us to stand up an endpoint and accept incoming messages and incoming requests from outside products. So just like we always would, we're going to create a solution, we're going to tie it to an agent. Both our message and, and request reply maps support cloud and premise agents. So. I'm going to use my on-premise agent to get to some on-premise resources, but again, this could be hosted in the cloud. This could really be anywhere that you want to host Scribe. When I get to my mapping, I'm going to notice this is the last step of this process. There is no step four for scheduling. So immediately, you know now that there is no polling, there's no interval. It's just going to be there and be ready and react to those events coming in. When you create a new map, there's two types of maps. Um, you have a message map, which is going to be tied to a salesforce.com connection using their outbound uh, messaging, and request reply, which is what we're going to use. Now, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use this request reply to add a account to Dynamics CRM. So instead of a query block, I have a wait for request. I can add my connection to CRM on premise. Use my same logic to do an update insert on that account within um, Dynamics. So just like always, I have access to all the different objects and fields within Dynamics. But what I'm going to see is that I haven't yet defined any source data. So I have stood up a wait for request, but I haven't done anything else with that. So what I'm going to have to do is go in here and define what that request is going to look like. In this case, I'm going to want to bring in the account name, the city, the state and the zip of that new account. So I'll keep it really basic. This is what that incoming request is going to have to look like. Now that I've added those values, if I come back into my my map, I'm now going to be able to utilize that matching criteria and the drag and drop interface. So I'm going to pick that I want to match name on name again for my nice quick example here. And then I'm going to use the same interface as Scribe's always had. I'm going to drag city to city, state to state, zip to zip, um, same way we always have. The benefit here is that everything that Scribe integrates with, I can now access via this type of a wait for request map. So no longer do I have to have you know a true full board connector in order to integrate with some of the systems that Scribe connects to. Um, I can I can hit this, and we'll go into that a little bit later. So now I've got my, my build of my update insert accounts done. I'm going to build a reply and send it back to that calling service. Now that build reply, what I want it to be is a couple of things. So first off is I want to capture that newly generated account ID and bring that back. I also want to bring back a column that I'm going to define for status. And basically what I'm going to say is... If I go to that update insert, what I'm going to find is, I scroll way down here, I got some results. So I've got error detail, error description. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab that error detail and I'm going to say that if that is null, I want to use a value when I'm going to default success. So I can actually use some conditional logic here to bring back different types of values. Now I could do that like I did in a formula. I could actually have multiple build replies that are going to exist. That's going to give me the ability to feed back some information to that system. Just like with any other normal map, I could leverage multiple connections. I could export and import this. I can have multiple maps. Unlike with our standard integration solution, um, these maps don't run in a particular sequence. So because they're being called in, that solution is going to contain you know, one or many maps, and they can be called all individually. They can run in parallel. Um, they are not, they don't have you know, one, then the next, the next. They can run um, completely in parallel between incoming requests. And they're also, um, 
they can run in different sequences as far as I can have some request reply, some message based maps. These solutions are now just become a container for all these maps. We can have them in all separate solutions. It doesn't really matter as far as how this, this process works. So what I'm going to find is now that I've saved that solution, if I come back in here, my wait for request block is going to have a new endpoint that's been generated. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that out of here. And that means now I have my endpoint that I can hit from something external. Now the first thing I got to do is if I want to use this, I got to make sure I have my security set up. So I have allowed global access just because it's a demo instance and you know it doesn't really matter because I don't have real data here. You'd most likely have whitelisted a set of IPs. Within that URL, we have an access token, which you can see here. If for whatever reason you need to you feel the need to change that, you simply hit reset from this location and it changes that token across all the URLs. So you have to go into each each thing you built to change that there. So again, not, not particularly um, exciting, but it, it's a pretty nice feature. Now what you can do with that is let's go ahead and I'm going to use this system. So this is a Postman. It's a little Chrome add-in. And what it allows me to do is I can post some data in. So what I can do now is I can say, okay, well, I've got JSON. So because it's a REST endpoint, I need to, I need to hit it with a post. I'm going to have my name. city, uh, etc. So I can add whichever values in here that I want. What I could also do, so this is basically showing you how to build that JSON. That could be called from anywhere. This could be a Marketo webhook. This could be a dynamic CRM form customization. Uh, if you looked at some of the other videos that we have on the YouTube channel, you've probably seen us use some of these examples in those particular use cases. But this is going to allow me to now hit that that endpoint with that data and it's going to bring back that real response. So I'm going to go in and it's going to attempt to create that record. It's going to bring me back success or failure based on what it, it said. Um, but this is from an application that Scribe has absolutely no tie into. All it is is it's hitting a, an endpoint. I can see a success. I see a GUID. And if I go into Dynamic CRM, just to you know completely show I have nothing up my sleeves, We'll find that account. So it's got the information that I, I put in there. Um, again, if I wanted to change that a little bit, if I want to go in and add data to it, I know I have an update. Um, I could add in my state, my zip. I could pass that data across, but it really means that from Scribe's point of view, we no longer need you to have a full board true blue connector to connect into Scribe's platform. We can stand up these REST endpoints and allow you, as the, as the des developer, as the designer, to simply hit us with a JSON post, pass us off some data, we'll do something with that, we'll feed you back a response, um, and then we can work through that, that integration scenario. These responses could be as simple as what I built. You could also have nested responses where I have additional things that are happening. I can tie these things in so I can actually build some hierarchy into what I respond back. So you can imagine this could get pretty um, complex with what you can accomplish with it, but the basics are that we now have the ability to be, you know, called from an external source. It doesn't have to be a scribe publisher or any of the old technology terms that we've had. What it also means is that I could use this to make a true composite app. So if I want to call this from an iframe and service data back up in, a, in kind of a mashup, I could now do that with a little bit of development chops behind me. So that request reply service, um, very cool, very interesting, very powerful service. It is a real near real-time service, so in generally speaking, the first time you hit it, it'll take a little bit longer because it opens up all these connections and it does it for the first time. Every subsequent run, it's generally about three or four seconds that you'll see it uh, it hit that. So if we go back into my Postman, and I'll add my one more parameter, my zip. doesn't really matter. Um, hit that. It'll send it across. It'll hit its CRM. It'll bounce back a, a status message. And again, it will do either that update or the insert. Um, 
and allows me to keep that connection kind of up and running. So it is pretty cool that these things can work. And now if I go back into CRM, and I'll just do a quick refresh here. You'll see I've got that zip code. Well, it had it for a second. I've got inside views also hooked up to this, so it doesn't uh, capture forever. But the point is that you can have, pass in as little or as many parameters as you need. You're defining what that web service looks like. You're defining how to capture and create that. Um, you can complete control of when you want to hit it, how you want to hit it, and Scribe's going to manage all that downstream processing about where the data is going. Is it HubSpot, Marketo, CRM, Salesforce? You're not learning all those different web services to hit. You're letting it you know, be unified by Scribe, and you're hitting the abstracted endpoint that we stand up. So it makes it a little bit easier to push these integrations out to multiple vendors.